Hello and welcome to my first video for a retrospective of my work throughout the years. Uh, this is a collection I got off of my Deviant Art page where I post pretty much everything I could get my hands on <laughs> uh, of all the books I worked on and random pages and pinups and commissions and whatnot. I hope my clicking isn't too loud. Uh, forgive me for that. But uh, let's get started with an actually a piece that isn't on my page. Uh, what you see before you is my second published work. <laughs> Uh, my first was a fantasy book. I don't remember the title of the book, nor do I remember the publisher. It was some Conan-esque book that I did with my brother, Jimmy Palmiotti. Um We co-inked it together, and that's the first real inking I did. Um, other than assisting... Uh, my brother and some other people were at the time I was only doing Philly and Black. Uh, but uh, this book, Personality Presents, the original crew, they did a lot of uh, the actors behind famous series and they had their original Star, Star Trek series. Uh, I didn't do this cover, uh, but I did the interior pages. And some were good, some not so good, uh, but <laughs> it was a blast working on it and getting published and seeing it in print. I uh, don't even remember how long the, the process was, but uh, <laughs> it was a wait back when. Uh, we're talking 1991, so way before computers and all that. All right, so I'm going to jump over to my Deviant Art page and go through each one as I posted them. They are not in chronological order. Um, I forget. Well, I posted this in 2009. I probably did this shortly around that time. I like some of it. The anatomy is way off, uh, but <laughs> it has some cool lines here and there. And it's definitely the first logo I uh, did it by hand, uh, penciled it, and then did inked it with brush. Uh, might have tightened it up with, uh, you know, definitely a straight lines with a ruler and ripograph and, and stuff, but. Uh, you can tell some of it's off. Uh, I did eventually get somebody to do a uh, an official logo of, of copying this design. Uh, not too unlike sort of X-Men stylish. Um, you know, having a character called Retro. It was a you know, it's my flashback to the the uh, love of 80s, some 70s, 80s mostly, and some 90s kind of comic book superhero stuff. Uh, I am, of course, going to interject a lot of my own ownness into it. <laughs> Um, yeah, originally I was going to co-publish with Red-Handed Studios. Uh, as it goes right now, I'm just going to self-publish it myself. Self-publish it myself. I am not an English major. Uh, but I penciled and inked this piece and 
<laughs> a lot of a lot of what you see by myself is embarrassing, but it is a retrospective, and uh, you know, as a pencil, I'm still learning a lot, and only one out of ten pieces is good. <laughs> But, yeah, I'm not being harsh on myself. It's realistic. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, this, this was done a while ago. Um, you know, I get, I did get a, a penciler f for uh, the series, Rich Fuchsia. Um, and Carrie Kelly from Red Handed Studios is actually doing the lettering. I do hope to get the first issue done before the end of the year. We'll see. Fingers crossed. I got so much on my plate. Uh, but I don't, I don't want to take forever on each piece. But I will give you a good rundown. Alright, let's see what's next. Ah, Bright Eyes. This was a piece I did for the Dime Store calendar. Um, this is not, uh, I should mention the other piece was January 2009. That's when I started posting on DeviantArt. Uh, this one's February. I probably did it around that time. I like aspects of it. I like her jeans and legs, even though her calves are kind of <laughs> huge. Um, something about that thick thighs uh, some of it's good her head's too small I can go on but it was a fun piece I, I recently gave it to somebody for charity uh, to help help somebody out that uh, ill and can't pay her bills uh, but Bright Eyes is you know it's my webcomic now that I'm working on with uh, 100 Days of Making Comics Challenge. And uh, even my logo on uh, DeviantArt today is a, a panel I sort of just quickly colored. It's one color. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, Bright Eyes is, is going to be a long story, and you'll see. You'll see. And here's a pencil sketch. The next piece up. Uh, originally posted late February 2009. Um, was really like a sketch I, I, I really love. Uh, the eyes aren't perfect, but. And it, it's not necessarily her likeness. Now keep in mind that uh, her likeness is very inspired, if not taken directly from a friend of mine, Maya, um, and uh, she's the one with the sort of quarter moon and star tattoo on her cheek, uh, if you ever see her on Facebook and whatnot. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I'm not great at likenesses, and, uh, you know, I figure it's going to take me a hundred pages <laughs> to get to even start to get it down right, but uh, I'm up for the challenge. Uh, but yeah, I love this piece and, and uh, hope that uh, she looks like that at some point in the book. Her hair will change, kind of like, you know, it is partially inspired by Tank Girl as well. All right, next up we have Skylar. Skyla Hope is the character from a book called Quantum Rock of Ages. Uh, a friend of mine, Phil's creation. Uh, and I did this. Uh, originally, it wasn't for uh, his book, but I changed, uh, I guess, only the facial features. <laughs> it was just something I was working on. And uh, he liked it and wanted to put it as a pinup. So I, I did the lettering of, of her name there and just, I guess, added the tattoo on her face. And it's a really nice piece. And obviously with uh, photo reference and a lot of it inspired by uh, Mocha style. Uh, is that how you pronounce it? 
uh, of art. And next up, we have the Professor, another piece, uh, heavy photo reference. Uh, but uh, I, I mostly like the way it came out. It, it's things I would change, like the, the bottom panel can be better, and separation between him and the background can be better. But you know, with coloring, you can do everything. <laughs> But I had fun on this piece, uh, especially like inking it, you know, just dropping the reference totally and, and going in and having fun. Uh, even my signature came out decently. Alright, next we have Arena. Arena, I will... Man, I got I got to get work on done on this, but um, this is the black and white cover. Um, I got, you know... I inked over Daniel Crossinger, and you know this is the first piece we did together. And I asked him, you know, what should I do? And he said, just go crazy. And I did, and it shows. <laughs> Spent a lot of time doing a lot of little detail, but it was a fun piece. Uh, this is a. Uh, interior page. The interior was done by Mike Hermoni. If I'm getting his name right. I'm so bad with names. Forgive me, peoples. This is one of my favorite panels. Pretty much looked like this. I, I did the um, feathering on the chest just to uh, show a little diversity and I really like the way that came out, and plus I went insane on the clouds on the ground. But he was a blast to to ink over, and originally it was in strip form. This so this was one page, uh, giant panel. All right. So next up, we have Wolverine vs. Captain America. Uh, I was fortunate enough to ink Ron Lim a couple of times. And I think this was for Wizard Magazine. It was, it was just a great piece to work on. You know, nothing background-wise, but good figure work. And it's a real... Real fun, 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 fun piece. Um, you know, and now with the, <laughs> the changes they're going through, I think uh, Wolverine's on his way out. He's going to die soon. And Captain America being replaced by Falcon. Uh, Captain America himself is 65 years old now. Yeah, so. it's uh, This is the way they were, folks. Moving on, I uh, did a lot of work over this fellow, Lyle Pollard. Uh, not the first Pollard I worked over, but uh, definitely an another good guy. And this was a alternate cover for issue one of his creation, Tribulations. And I, I just really like working over his pencils. Um, I like somebody who's a little loose and gives me uh, leeway. <laughs> uh, you know, I, 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 I've worked on a diverse amount of artists. And, you know, so um, as an anchor, I, I melded my style with pencilers and always try to communicate with them. What are you looking for? What do you want? How tight? How loose? Um, but, you know, he is very willing to let me do uh, my thing. And, of course, I usually add a lot of little detail. And next up, uh, still one of the biggest books I'm known for is working over Jim Calfieri on Aquaman. 
uh, written by Peter David. So it was really a great team, and, and I think Cal Fury, as well as uh, the editors who were uh, really w willing to work with me on uh, doing my best work, and, and you know, it was because of Cal Fury. I've told this story plenty of times, but uh, I, it's because of Cal Fury that I got hired. He sent me pencil samples to ink. And, you know, he was happy, and the editors were like, yep, good, we're good to go. Um, I believe we're getting to that issue soon, so I'll talk more there. But this was uh, Aquaman issue 17, volume, I forget, uh, way before 52. <laughs> this was the Hook era, of course. Um... But I love doing the hair and beard and wacky costume and uh, and the crazy hook. <laughs> but this cover was used for a, a DC encyclopedia, I believe. So it was uh, not only for the comic, but I've seen it elsewhere. Another cover, issue 40, much later in our run. I believe the last issue I worked on was 48. Cal Fury did 49. Uh, new team took over with issue 50. Uh, but I believe the next one, yes, issue 10. Um, I worked on Aquaman essentially from issue 10 to issue 48. Uh, it wasn't every issue. I believe I worked on not complete issues, but uh, at least 24, maybe 25 issues. Uh, so, it was uh, a lot of grueling days, you know, I really upped my game when I worked on the very first issue, which was this. I didn't ink the cover, but I did from first page one to last page, 22 probably, uh, with stupid Green Lantern overlays, <laughs> and as it was done back then. I inked anything that Green Lantern shot out of his ring on a uh, plastic overlay that crinkled up over time and whew, man what a pain but I learned so much in, in, in just working on one issue alright I'm not going to take forever on each one but uh, Battle Books was something that uh, was successful for Bill Tucci and I got to ink one of the covers, Gambit, uh, X-Men, of course you know. Uh, Bill Tucci, mostly known for his uh, great own character, She. He's doing all sorts of stuff now, war comics for DC and whatnot. Um, yeah, he, he's a tremendously talented guy, uh, made, made it as an independent and uh, doing pretty well for himself. He he had his own uh, Crusade comics, I believe it was. Running with a bunch of tiles at one time. Yeah. Uh, there's another... This is a mini-series that uh, Mike Martz, of, uh, he's been at Marvel, he's been at DC as an editor, um... He did this, he edited this for a video game tie-in. Um, does it say? Uh, not sure, I think it was early 2000s. And I got to ink the whole miniseries, I believe, over Cal Fury. And uh, I posted this in 2009, it really doesn't say anything. Um, but this is a real blast. The, the uh, video game didn't do so well. <laughs> um, this, I, you know, I put out the word that way back when I was doing commissions and Daniel, uh, my good buddy and friend, commissioned me to... 
uh, pencil and ink a, a photo he had of himself but to do my own interpretation and this is a crazy bullhead he was holding and uh, and did this in 2009 I like I like a lot of it but some of it could be better uh, <laughs> it's definitely a crazy piece <laughs> You know, when you commission me, you're, you're getting weird stuff. This, this is another arena panel, another one of my favorites. I just love the the forearm guy, the detail I threw on him. Was you know, I just had fun feathering all the you know muscles on the arm and. I really love the way his face came out, and also the other guy with the sword. It was just so much fun inking over Mike. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna get that book out one day. I promise. Uh, this is me and Lyle Pollard. Um, he penciled the Captain America pinup, and I inked it. I forget if the colored version is part of what we're going to cover today, but uh, um, now, mind you, okay, when did I post this? 2009. All right. Uh, at various points um, since I've been on DC, uh, DC, since I've been on Deviant Art, have I had a good scanner, and I. Since 2009, I, I don't know how many times I moved, so a lot of scans I rushed and didn't erase, and yeah, I am <laughs> apologize for poor quality sometimes. Um, so on to Tribulations, page two, issue two. Uh, I inked a bun bunch of pages of this issue. This being not an exciting one, but it was one that uh, Lyle had colored. So I p posted it up to promote it. Um, I really wish he, he continued on with the book. Uh, mostly he's posting art to, uh, what should we call it, eBay and making money that way. So it goes. <laughs> That's how a lot of artists are making money. Um, so next, <laughs> Kirby-esque. Um... This is a post uh a poster. This this was a picture I I made with my camera with my camera with my laptop. And I, I love this picture. My my favorite green shirt and striped dress shirt and just the the Kirby esque sort of Galactus pose. With the light behind my head. Uh, yeah, it's me during my little younger days. More hair. <laughs> um, this was a cover, Death Squad, of a book called Death Squad, and penciled by Scotty Watson. Uh, don't think it was ever published, but I met Scotty years ago, and he's become a good friend. And just love his work. It has a somewhat 90s flair. Um, he just gets better day by day, and he's digital now, uh, working digital, but he's still got the same flair to his work. Um, this was a uh, issue of Golly that I had the pleasure to ink 
at the time I inked it, the publisher was up in the air. Um, but it eventually landed at Image. And man, I wish I, I at the time, I, you know, I needed to make an income with what I was working on. Hey, that's how it usually goes. But, uh, um, um, Brooke Turner was the penciler and he did some amazing work and I, I loved how I looked over his work and, and really busted my ass on the issue. Uh, if you ever see Golly issue two, take a look at it. It's, it's, it was really a pleasure to work with Brooke as well as, uh, Phil Hester, the, uh, writer, cre creator who gave me the job. Um, and, uh, hey, another book published at Image. Um, I did a pinup for some other book, creator own small indie. I think it, it was popular for a short while. I forget what book it was, but, uh, Paradox, um, I'm not going to forget it. Some book Cal Fury worked on that, uh, two issues were published by Image. I think we did two, two, two and a half issues I worked on. Well, I had, so I had two different books published through, through Image. <laughs> so I did some Image work. Uh, this is Avengers Team Up by Dave Ryan. Uh, this, this was a lot of fun. Uh, really one of my favorite pieces over Dave. And you might recognize some of these guys. Um, they have all changed. I think the big Goliath guy was killed. Black Goliath, he might have been called. Uh, obviously Falcon is now Falcap, or whatever his name is. There's, um, uh, Warrior, um, Warrior. Um, Iron Man, the other one. Jeez. It's been too long. <laughs> <laughs> and his blade and voodoo uh brother voodoo i think it was name and ms model and of course luke cage in the foreground it was just a fun piece to work on and uh i really threw some amazing lines down on it if i do say so myself next Okay, so Triple Treat. Uh, this is a Scotty promotional piece. <laughs> I think it got published in something that uh, Dave Ryan uh, uh, put, put it in one of his books, maybe. I'm not sure. So, the story goes with Triple Treat, and I think the logo comes up soon, is <clears throat> there's Ward Independence, if you don't know that it's over a hundred independently owned creator characters um, all put into one book by Dave Ryan written and penciled it a six issue miniseries it was a Kickstarter it might be an ongoing series at this point in time um, but my but Triple Treat was supposed to be my tie-in to that and I could still get around to it one day. It, you know, <laughs> uh, but it was gonna have uh, Bright Eyes, who's on the right, uh, Talon, who's on the left, and G's. Oh, Ezra, which is a Arcana Comics character. Um, but. You know, it, my my concept of Triple Treat changed, and Ezra was replaced a couple of times. And at the moment, if I was to do that, this book today, if, if somebody was to pay me a large sum of money, um, <clears throat> I don't know who it would be at the moment, but uh, I gotta find somebody good to, to replace her. Uh, but. You know, I will do it one day, and it may have 30 or so creator-owned characters in it. But I have the story, plot, and, you know, 
mostly worked out. We'll see if I get back to it one day. Uh, then, you know, besides Aquaman, I, I did a lot of miscellaneous uh, Marvel work. And I got the, the fortune of working over Francis Yu, uh, who many people maybe might know, and inking not only Wolverine, a couple Wolverine pages, but uh, Wendigo was in it, and I uh, was overjoyed. I love Francis's work. I really wish I would have gotten a chance to ink some more than a couple of pages, but so it goes. Uh, next we have Comic Book Novice logo, black and white. Comic Book Novice was a radio show I was a, a co-host on. There was the main host, Mark Torres, and uh, three changing co-hosts, I, which was one of them. I was in charge of news, uh, which I just stole off the internet. Um, <laughs> and we did a little logo for it. This is penciled by... Brian Kong, Ink by Me. Uh, the changes you see in white, if you look closely, were changes Mark decided on after the fact. Um, make her shirt squat, make her skirt shorter. <laughs> but crazy hair. Uh, I think that was one of Mark character Mark's characters he created. And the next up is the color version colored by Brian with his uh, uh, um, signature stamp <laughs> that he had. <laughs> uh, next up is a, a book that Mark Torres wrote and the interior was a different artist of which I inked a bunch of pages but I got the immense pleasure of inking over Francesco. Um, I think I was probably the only person who ever inked him. <laughs> but this was the color version. Um, it might be a, a, a person that Francesco knew. Probably. Uh, but it came out amazing and still to this day don't know the status of the book maybe one day it was good it was a good alien lots of kids becoming superheroes or something or other anyway moving on to shadow play uh this is my good buddy joe martino um created a character shadow flame and and self-published years and years ago uh, now he's working with Dave Ryan so they're, they're together they combine their forces and then doing a, a lot more incredible stuff and they got a, a plethora of books now over uh, Red Anvil comics they're called uh, but this was over Rick Buckler Rick Buckler is Rick Buckler's son who's an amazing artist and this was a hell of a lot of fun to ink so that was that um, there's another piece over Scotty Watson with his character Talon this was a villain of Talon's I forget his name but uh, cool page I just Scotty really knows uh, about character design. Uh, he has a bit of a, a video game background. He worked at uh, Lucas I, I Am Studios. Um, so yeah, he's he's really good at that. So now another Joe Martino pinup of uh, Shadow Flame, an earlier. Um, much like uh, DC has the JSA, well, this was Shadow Flame back in the day of 1975. Uh, his his father, I think. I don't know if he ever went with this story part, point, but uh, that was his father as Shadow Flame. 
with the costume almost, you know, almost exactly the same except for the cape mostly and, and yeah. Maybe the belt? Yeah. The belt's different. <laughs> I thought that was fun to do. Uh, then the JGM Universe. Joe S George Martino? Uh, I forget his middle name. Forgive me, Joe. Uh, this is Shadow Flame, Cyberine, uh, Ripper Man, and a couple of his other characters that I believe, you know, he's he's incorporating into his new books now. Uh, Cyberine is getting his own miniseries, I believe, and you see a couple of the other ones, Crimson, and I forget the other girl's name, but, uh, this was penciled by Joe, inked by me, inked by this good, really good colorist, Greg Waller. Uh, I think he did some work with Dave as well. Here's another Shadow Flame cover uh, by Joe. Here's Shadow Flame 3, the back cover. This was an amazing piece. Um, we forget the pencil his name, uh, but it, it's just an amazing piece. Ink, um, ink by me and colored by Dash Martin, who's mostly known for his uh, inks, I believe. Oh Jesus, I I don't know him as a colorist, I think, but uh, amazing piece. I love the way it came out, and just I believe still uses it here and there. Has a lot of his characters. This was a Riffin' Man t-shirt that Joe Pencil and I inked, and man, it had a lot of black, and I think I went over that thing that um, three or four times <laughs> because it was so much black. Uh, but that was, that was fun to do. And I think he sold a couple of t-shirts, so that's good. Uh, this was a spin-off of tribulations of, of Lyle Pollard's uh, creation called Nova City Stories. It was supposed to be a miniseries. This was the cover for issue one. I just ha had a lot of fun doing this like like the way it came out. Uh, then we're back to Shadow Flame and this particular piece was penciled by Mike Grell and being a huge Mike Grell fan for years uh, it was an immense pleasure to ink over him, and Joe got got it colored really good. Um, so I love the way it came out. Loved to have worked over Mike Grell. Uh, and this is another Joe Martino pencil me inked Frank. Canonzo colored. Um, I forget. This might have been an early Shadow Flame trade. 10th anniversary special. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah. It's fun to do a wraparound. I think. You know, I don't think I did that many if that was. That might have only been the only one. Uh, another Shadow Flame cover, this one penciled by Paul Ryan. Uh, a lot of people may know his work from uh, his very, very, very long Fantastic Four run. And it was an awesome piece, and I was nervous working on it, just like the micro one. Uh, and I think I did a, a bang up job, and this is the color version. Uh, and so. Kowski uh, was a colorist, did a fantastic job. Um, all right, and just let's see, we're running long. And oh, I remember where I wanted to stop. Okay, still a little ways. All right, here's an, a talent page that's pretty bloody. 
This was penciled by David Front and inked by me. Um, and this was part of a short story with Talon. Yeah, for a zero issue. I believe it wound up in the Talon like trade paperback. Um, this was a Talon zero cover. Pencil by Scotty, ink by me, uh, colored by Jeff Balky. And I think they didn't go with this cover. <laughs> I think they just went through into Scotty pencils. Uh, I forget why. But, er, it came out good. Uh, oh well. What's she gonna do? And this is the Code Arena cover by Robert. Elrod, who also did the color of the interior. The logo up top is different, but uh, that is pretty much the, the final cover. Uh, this is Daniel Krosinger penciled a mini series, uh, Distortions Unlimited. And this is the original cover for issue one. Uh, although they went with a, a Daniel cover. <laughs> but as you can see, because of the, the wood grain, um, the whole three issues, like 66 plus pages, each page was on a wood plank. And I tell you, this issue weighed a ton. Uh, and also inking on wood was not exact it bled a lot and uh, but I did get some kind of cool faded effects in there it was very interesting to work on and uh, it's the only thing I ever got an award for so <laughs> there you go I got an inking award for inking on that book uh, and this is another cover issue 2 this one was used and colored, uh, I believe, by Daniel himself. Uh, and this is just a, an online friend from uh, Comic Space Days. Uh, this girl, Olivia, just really liked her work. And uh, she did a very cool, I think, a zombie comic way back when that, that was posted in full on the site. I since found her on Facebook, but um, I don't think she's highly active nowadays. Uh, this is a guy, Ryan Paul, penciled this. I inked this. I think we sold her on eBay, if, if I'm correct. Um, he's a really talented artist, and this really doesn't show off his talent. This is more him just duplicating... Christopher Reeve and Michael Keaton and somebody is Wonder Woman, uh, but uh, it's a nice piece. Uh, but you know, I think uh, something else is coming up. This is a, a, a independent comic called Terra Twenty Nine Twenty. Uh, the penciler is George McVeigh, and I just really added a lot of my technique to it and had a lot of fun working on that but it was short lived I thought it would be a regular but uh, they couldn't afford me so it goes um, this is a piece by Ringo Mike Ringo um, I met him a couple of times at conventions really nice guy everybody from you know that era um, knows just what what a great guy he was and what a fantastic artist he was and it was great to uh, work on s I did this and some other things for Inquest uh, Inquest was Wizard Magazine's other magazine um, games or fantasy or, or something and I believe this piece is um, 
gate crashes. Uh, I could be wrong. I think it is. And gate crashes was a creation of my brother's Jimmy Palmiotti. Um So I got to ink this piece, and that was cool. I did a lot of a lot of work for uh, Wizard, and was happy, very happy to do so, because they paid double. Uh, anyone else, even Mall in DC, uh, I got more for doing like oh, half size work. Um, usually it was like overnight, but uh, they paid awesomely. Unfortunately, didn't last. You know, last, lasted a couple of years. <laughs> uh, but that was the, the best work. And here's another incredible piece. Uh, this one was the favorite I did uh, inked over Ron Lim. Of course, Thanos vs. Dark Seed. And it's kind of funny because they're both going to be in, you know, Thanos is going to be in Marvel movies, Dark Seed is going to be in DC movies. So, awesome, awesome. Uh, but love this, love this piece. Still waiting for somebody to color it. <laughs> Maybe I should just color it myself. Uh I don't have time. <laughs> uh, next. And I'm not sure how far I am from the finish line here, folks, but we're getting there. Okay, Landrone. When he first came on the scene, uh, before doing Richard Stockings' Elf, Elephant Guy books, I forget what it's called. <laughs> he was very Kirby-esque uh, with a little um, uh, Morbius uh, infused into his work. And uh, mostly what I did was just follow his lines because it was so confusing seeing this in pencil and uh, his pencils not being that dark. But it was a blast. I did a couple of pages over him. Um, and I wish I could tell you what book I think. Oh, well, yeah, it's this is from uh, um, Cable. Cable, that's what it was. Had Nick Fury, had Cable. Bunch of robots. <laughs> Uh, this is Carrie Nord, uh, I believe another piece for Wizard Magazine, Wolverine vs. Daredevil, fun one living Daredevil, flying around the air, this is a great piece, and, uh, love me some Carrie. Uh, this is me over Drew Martino, this is his creation, Ripper Man. This was published as a trade by Arcana. Um, this page is page one. I took the, <laughs> took the most time on. Uh, he had very loose pencils of a church and door, and you know I think the the f close up of the eyes was the most detail. I just went insane and throughout the whole book, although this was the most effective page. <laughs> uh, it got wonky down the line, but I had a lot of fun throughout. Uh, took me incredibly long. But I guess it was a learning experience as everything is. Uh, this was a piece that a fan wanted me to ink over Ethan Van Shriver, uh, which I was definitely uh, all for. Um, you know, I met Ethan a few times, you know, at, you know, he did Cyber Frog way back when for Harris Comics, and, uh, for a long time, you know, he was a no-name, and, 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 uh, it was very quickly that it became a big name on the scene, and, uh, love his insanity, in his work and and had a lot of fun working on this. Um, 
and we almost got to work together, but it didn't pan out. Uh, as some things don't. But so goes. He did see this piece afterwards and went, really liked it. So there's that. Happy about that. Uh, so got to ink some Alpha Flight, which was awesome. And ink Duncan R Rolio. Um, I'm sure a lot of you know his work. I'm not sure what he's doing now, but it might be um, animation, design, graphic design. I'm, I'm not even sure. Uh, he, he was really big doing comics at, at one point, and I got to ink a batch of his pages. And Alpha Flight, man, how awesome is that? Another piece for Wizard. Um, not sure who the artist was. Uh, this was an incredibly fun piece. Super tight. And loved the way I inked it. And the brain in Munsa Ma verse. Doughboy. Of course. I, I, I'm not sure who won. <laughs> but awesome piece. Uh, another... Nova City stories. Oh well, this is yeah. This is the color version. Eh, I like aspects of it. Be perfectly honest. Uh, could have been colored better. I loved it in black and white. So there's that. Uh, Rob Hawkins colored this. Yeah, it's. I liked it in black and white better. <laughs> Not to be uncritical when it comes to Kali. Alright, so we have Hector. Hector Rodriguez is an amazing artist, and he allowed me to do some samples over his Hell's Blood creation. Unfortunately, I took too long, and he decided, uh, I think. He ate it, inked it himself, or he just made the pencils dark. I forget. But incredible work. Um, I took too long because, hey, you know, I think a part of it was, yeah, I was inking over blue line. I'm not good inking over blue line on light boxing. It takes me forever in a day. I'm slow enough as a regular inker. Um, Gold Digger. This was a piece inked by Willie, Willie Jimenez um, for Gold Digger uh, Arctic Press Comics. Uh, they usually do Gold Digger uh, pinup books, so I finally got to be in one. Uh, I, follow, I followed Art, uh, Antarctic press comics for years. I mean, you know, I picked up previews and man, I followed everybody, but uh, here's another Hell's Bud pinup that I inked as a sample. I think it came out really good. Um, Colossus and Kitty by Ryan Paul. This was I think my favorite piece over him. I think it really came out awesomely. It's very simple, but really, really nice. Kitty and, and Peter uh, doing, I don't, I don't know what, but <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> Lots of fun. This is uh, me inking over Matt Broom on uh, Gambit, uh, Gambit page. Then I did some pages over Brian Kong um, that he penciled from a story by Noc Torres for a Young Avengers What If. This is one of the pages. And this is, uh, that was basically Mark, um, Brian trying to do comics and He's much better 
as a, a card artist, <laughs> as most people know him as. Uh, this was a page from Slingers, which was a Spider-Man spin-off series. Um, an artist, Greg Lozniak. I'm not sure if he did a lot, but man, his pages were tough to ink. I mean, the bottom panel on this took me forever to decipher the lines, and uh, when we dealing with pencils that tight and close and all that blackness around it and I think some of that was filled in black and pencil um it just took me longest time to decipher I had to like ink a section and then erase the pencil and to see it better uh yeah this page took me a while along with his other pages that I inked over him uh we might be nearing the end Where are we at? Oh, almost an hour. Oh, well, as I as I look at the what I'm taping, um, this is one of my favorite pages from a Deadpool issue that never seen print. You could probably find it online, but it was written in pencil by Jim Calfury, inked by me, and that's as far as it got. It contained. Half the Marvel Universe. Uh, the characters it did not contain were any mutants. <laughs> so it did have the Fantastic Four. It did have the Avengers. There was Deadpool. There was uh, Spider-Man in it. I think. Um, I think we'll see a page come out. Uh, but this was one of my favorite pages, and it took a little time. Uh, this was a Jim Luhan character. Jim Luhan was uh, Ustreaming one night, and I felt inspired to just sort of ink sketch one of his characters, and I. I loved the way it came out. I don't think I could duplicate the feel of that. It was just I was inspired. Um, Why well, I watched him do it and sketched at the same time. So, awesome, awesome piece. Uh, this is a a book called Dead Don't Sleep. I'm not sure how many issues came out. Maybe two, but I inked a cover or two of this. There's a zombie book by Lyle Pollard from a script written by Jason Smith. I forget who the publisher was. There's so another Tribulations cover I inked. Uh, sorry for the crappy scan. But the, the whole thing with um, the character in Tribulations was that he was a single father with a baby. And uh, since Lyle, I believe, just had his first baby, he, he related to that. Or, well, that's why he made it that way. <laughs> uh, this is uh, another from Quantum Rock Ages' Philip Clark's comic book. Pencils by James Rodriguez, an amazing artist. Ink by me. I think I went a little crazy with the detail. Uh, it's a lot of it's subtle, but and that lettering took me forever. Um, and the numbers over the door. But it's, I love uh, working on the, uh, the black girl's hair on the right. <laughs> that was a hell of a lot of fun. Uh, and the feathering on that came out pretty perfectly. Uh, is I did a couple of things over James, and and he just does amazing work. Ah, uh, and this Robin Nightwing and Robin. Okay, that's horrible. Moving on. That was me. Pencils inks horrible. <laughs> um. 
And this is H Town, a book I inked a smattering of pages to um, over Alan Angel, a book written by Chris Per Gay Ah. Oh man, I can't pronounce his last name. Um Pergurdy. <laughs> oh my god. Um anyway, Chris and Alan were they're great guys, uh not very organized. And uh I really wish we could have could have done a lot more together. It was it was fun to work on. Uh, this is again with Scotty Watson, a album cover. Uh, not a lot of opportunities did I get to ink on an album cover. This was one of them. And this is, I did a lot of work at London Night Studios back in the 90s. Uh, most of it over Richard Pollard. This particular piece was Richard Fuchsia, who's the penciler of Retro. Uh, my character, my book, um, but it was because of our, our brief time working on a uh, backstory on Razor that we for formed a friendship years ago and uh, reconnected recently, well, not, not, not recently, recently, a couple of years ago, um, and talked about working on a comic together, and I gotta get it off my ass and get the first issue done. Uh, once again, going back to Scotty, this is uh, The Colors uh, by Jeff Balky. And uh, I gotta say, it looks awesome. <laughs> um, I forgot the, uh, oh, Society's Plague was the, uh, the band and maybe the uh, album name. Uh, another pinup by Lyle Pollard, ink by me. Took my time with this one. Have fun. Um, Wish the the space of it was black, but that effect was done in color. I th I believe the color piece is coming up. Uh, but really liked the way it came out in black and white. It was fun over over uh, Lyle. Uh, this is me, Pencils and Inks, just a random Hulk card. Uh, this was posted in, what, 2010. Uh, I think this was my first attempt at getting into sketch cards, and I didn't do a hell of a lot, but this one I liked. Uh, more when it was colored, which I believe is coming up. This is Random Punk Rock Girl. Which looked amazing in 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 person. The scan, not so much. It looks like blue behind her, but that's I think it's more green. Uh, it looks amazing in person. The hair, I think, looks similar. Just really love how the original looks out, and it's not a bad drawing either. You know, my my women are a little manly sometimes, but. <laughs> And look, her G-string is on only one side. Anyway, it was fun. This is another Quantum Rock of Ages cover uh, over James Rodriguez. Another one I took my time on and came out really good. And uh, I think it looked even good in color. I don't think I have color versions, so. This is a Generation X piece by Ryan Paul. Um, this, by no means, in, uh, in conf you know, covers the amount of vast variety of artists I've worked over the years. Um, you know, it, it's unfortunately I moved way too many times and. Anything I've kept years ago of copies I've made of work I've done 
interior pages, covers, uh, a lot of it just got lost, or not lost, just thrown away or given away. So unfortunately, you know, it's whatever I posted is what I could, you know, still had or what I could pull together from, you know, just random places. Uh, this was an a inking commission over Sanford Green, who uh, who liked what I did here. <laughs> Um, I also liked what I did here, you know. It was on two bit different pieces of paper. It was kind of tough to work on. I forget. Oh, that's why. Because it was in a uh, sketchbook, that's why. Uh, so it was kind of tough to work, work in a fold. Uh, but I pulled it off. And it was a great piece that Sanford did. Funky disco dancing, well, not disco, hip hop dancing, <laughs> whatever you call it, dancing Spider Man. Uh, this is another Daniel Krosinger piece over a Vincent Price issue uh, that I got to ink. Uh, unfortunately, Vincent Price wasn't in the issue, but it was a horror story that I had a lot of fun inking over Daniel. This is the first book we inked, I uh, we worked on together that I inked over him. So I went a little nuts and he went a little nuts with the penciling and visual style. It's a fun issue. Uh, another Wolverine page over Francis Yu with Wendigo. Just love, love, love working on, working on these pages. Wish I had more copies. Uh, okay, so here we go, uh, uh, another Deadpool page. Yes, there was Spider-Man, there was, there's a lot more heroes, Miss Marvel, Nova, um, yeah. It was essentially Deadpool Saves the Marvel Universe. Uh, like I said, you could, you could find it online, perhaps. And here is the other page I posted. You got Hercules there. Uh, Quicksilver in the background. Doctor Strange. A stupid costume for the Hulk. <laughs> Vision. I love the Vision. Moon Knight. You know, a bunch of characters. Captain America. Iron Man. Fantastic Four. Yeah, part of the reason was that by the time they were ready to publish this, a lot of the characters changed costumes. It was during one of those uh, very popular times that they were changing everybody's costume. Alright, well, I know we're coming to near the end. Um, here is John Boy uh, with a a creator on character called Coil, as if you can't read it yourself. Uh, John Boy is a fantastic artist and had the pleasure of working with him. He has grown leaps and bounds since he worked on this. He's a phenomenal artist. He's done game design and, and Magic the Gathering cards and Marvel comics and a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, and this, this was a lot of fun to work on. You know, you know, it never got published. He had a bit of a falling out with the writer who wanted the copyright in his name, blah, blah, blah. <coughs> But here is another page from that. It was also a lot of fun to do. Uh, here's the Darth Vader in color. Uh, here's a avatar I drew, penciled and inked, and Carrie Kelly colored and put the retro logo in there. Um, 
I don't think I had a logo at the time. Well, no, I did, but I didn't have an officially cleaned up version one, so he just sort of made one up. But I loved it. <laughs> it worked so well and colored so beautifully. And it was my avatar for a lot of things for the longest time. Uh, posted this in 2010, so <laughs> it was probably a year or two that I kept this on a lot of sites. Uh, this was a Kitty Cat commission that came out bizarrely, but uh, it worked. <laughs> I don't normally uh, draw animals or draw specific people's animals, but I, I loved the guy on on the on our left. Uh, <laughs> it just they both look so wrong. Um, this is a this was um, Return to Castle Dracula a short story that I was going to ink uh, unfortunately uh, it was for um, Ian Sherman of Orangutan Comics unfortunately the artist wasn't willing to um, <clears throat> mail me the pencils and you know I tell everybody I, I work over pencils um Andre Lim Arajo um he's an amazing artist and I had a blast inking a couple of pages but I was inking over blue lines and it took me forever and finally I needed to make some money so I had a bell unfortunately uh, another Talon pinup or Scotty Watson. Let me see if I can speed up. I think I'm coming to the end. Uh, here's a retro pinup uh, by R Rich Fisher and with my inks. Uh, I wanted to do it like a sort of GQ spoof ad with my character was co wearing his costume but then having civ <laughs> civilian clothes over it. Uh, sort of like he's at work, kind of, as well. Nah, love the way it came out. <laughs> it's just funny to me. Uh, here is that Hulk sketch card that I wore to call it up. Uh, once again, it's, it's the uh, scan of it is close, but the, um, the original looked much better. I'm pretty sure I sold that. <laughs> uh, here's a Bright Eyes sketch card I did for something. Oh, as part of uh, Dave Ryan's Wordy Independence uh, um, card set, I believe it, it was for. So it was fun to do. A little wonky, but colorful. Hey, it's, at least it's colorful. Ah, uh, yes, so here again is, uh, I had the logo officially made up uh, off of uh, a design I came up with. Since there's a, a lot of sword welding females, uh, I made the T's into swords. And that was executed by this guy, Sean Jones, who you can find on DeviantArt. A Talon pinup inked over Scotty. Look, there's a bird. Uh, this was a sort of a batch of pages I inked for a book called Assumption that was going to be more, um, shown to different publishers. It never got picked up. But it was put together um, with a bunch of other creations from the writer into a book that was part of a successful Kickstarter drive. And the book was called Matinee Electrica. Uh, the, the writer creator was Ryan Schrott. Uh, and the pencils were. Ben Anstrom. 
Uh, the pencils were amazing, and I had a lot of fun working on that. And I think I did five or six pages, maybe six or seven, I forget. But this was, I think, my favorite page. Uh, it's just amazing work. It took forever. <laughs> uh, and this was one of, uh, this is a penance villain of J Dave Ryan's creation, penciled by Jamal Engel, inked by myself, and colored by Greg Waller. I think uh, Greg did an amazing coloring job on that, and Jamal. Jamal's work kicks ass. Uh, we're coming to the end. Okay, this is a Deadpool page in color, um, colored by Volker. Um, I think this particular page is okay. What I was blown away with, and where we end part one of a retrospective of my work, is with the Deadpool splash, with Deadpool and the thing f fighting off robots and smashing alien crafts. I think Volker did an amazing job on this. This is an amazing piece, obviously due to Jim Calvary's amazing pencils. My inks, eh, they added some. <laughs> you know, Jim Jim uh, pencils quite tightly. But all right, so. I'll end this here and we'll be again back for a part two. I believe what I'm going to do to, is offer this up in Gumroad as a digital download where you can pay what you want if you really wish to have this video as a part of your collection. Um, I would appreciate anyone who, who, who does uh, download it and, and throws me anything, you know, to, to continue to support my uh, upcoming work, which is m me moving more into penciling and working on my own webcomics and doing sketch cards and upcoming illustration work and, and commissions and all sorts of things. So I appreciate anybody who follows my work on my various sites that I'm on and likes and comments and through praises my way. Um, thank you all. I appreciate each and every one of you. And thank you for watching this all the way through. Um, and uh, I hope you will be interested in... in seeing uh, more of this and me go over uh, my various work that I posted throughout the years. Uh, like I said, there's a ton more, but this is this is all I have, folks. This is all I've collected throughout the years. And If only computers were around a little earlier, I would have saved a, a ton more stuff. But uh, sorry about that. All right. Take care. Till next time. Be a productive artist, encourage others, and support independent comics. Bye now.